Bear with me here, I wrote this script while in an airport terminal. The assumption I'm going to make in this video is that you've already seen the plethora of benchmarks for the Intel Core i9-9900K. With its 8 cores and 16 threads, it's definitely the new gaming king, no denying that. But at what cost? Well, on paper, over 500 USD, actually closer to 600 right now. That can easily jump to 7 or 800 USD equivalent in other countries, mind you, where supplies and taxes vary. We'll assume, though, the US figure for the sake of argument here. So who in his or her right mind would spend $500, $600 on a hyper-threaded 8-core CPU? Well, according to Intel, the same kind of people who would spend upwards of 400 USD on a hyper-threaded 6-core CPU. The 8700K was successful from the start because it held the title of Gaming King, and it's been that way for quite a while. It was praised as such by myself and colleagues in this regard. And to be completely honest, I don't really have much of a problem with the vast majority of Intel's pricing structure. I've never really complained too much about like Core i5 pricing. I did complain quite a bit about the 7350K. That was excessive, and I called it out right when I saw it. Uh, but most of the time, Intel is pretty smart about how they price things. But when it comes to the 9900K, I'm a little, I'm a little flustered, I'm a little upset, because I feel like that's not where the market price for that, that chip should be, but it is. And we'll explain why, we'll explain why they're sold out everywhere, and we'll also explain how that price in the future will affect sales right now for AMD counterparts, because uh, I'm sure AMD's a little worried, but I don't imagine they're too worried, because the people who are already buying AMD CPUs are more value-oriented, and Intel has pretty much forfeited that running at this point. So in a nutshell, if you want a Core i3, you'll pay a little over 100 bucks for it. If you want a Core i5, a little over 200. I7s have traditionally been in the 3 to 350 sweet spot, that's referring to the last few generations, but this latest launch is a bit strange. If you want Intel's most expensive consumer grade chip now, you'll have to pay over 500 USD for it, closer to 600 again. If we use the 8700K as a bit of context, its MSRP was roughly 350 at launch. Jumping to 500 bucks for this generation or higher, which is arguably another refresh, you'll need to pay 40% more for it and again for marginal improvements across the board. Now at this point some of you may be trying to defend Intel, and there's nothing wrong with defending a company as long as it's justified correctly, in my opinion. Well, it's priced so much higher because this is the first 8-core consumer chip they've ever released. This is an exception. And to that, I have two counter-arguments. One, the 8700K was Intel's first 6-core consumer chip. It didn't cost 500 or 600 USD. And two, why is it that AMD can charge so much less for, honestly, anywhere between maybe a 10 to 15% FPS delta, which most people are willing to concede when seen in the context of a $600 chip versus a $300 one? To be fair, we are seeing sometimes a 15 to 25% performance loss between the 9900K and 2700X. That's currently AMD's best consumer-grade CPU. You. But in many games, this gap narrows significantly, and that's why I said 10 to 15 prior to this. So why should this make sense? Why shouldn't we question Intel's pricing strategy here? Many are upset, and I believe it's justified, uh, but I don't know if we understand the full context here, and that's what I want to bring to light in this video. It isn't even like these CPUs require entirely new platforms, right? With simple BIOS updates, Coffee Lake configured chipsets can handle the new generation with ease, power limitations aside. But I am curious as to whether the power draw from an overclocked 9900K under load can be sustained without VRM throttling. More testing coming soon uh, on the channel in that arena. So back to the whole pricing strategy thing. What exactly is behind Intel suggested retail price? And why are inventory levels always so low at launch? My theory is twofold. The first is that Intel's obviously using the 14 nanometer node for both its chipsets and CPUs. That's short supply because you can't push all of that productivity into the CPU side of things. I get it. But I also think that demand is always high in the beginning, and when you have a loyal fan base, that demand curve tends to be inelastic, meaning large changes in price won't change quantity demanded. So in a conventional market, when prices go up, demand decreases, and resulting supply increases. This gap between the two lines signifies a dead weight loss, or to be more exact, in this case, market surplus. But in an inelastic scenario, the demand curve is much steeper. So when we slide up and down the y-axis, representing product price, quantity demanded along the x-axis remains relatively unchanged. Brand loyalty tends to be the cause of such events. That or the good in question is something that's essential, which may require state and local regulation to control, but that's a separate issue. Intel in this context, however, is not regulated. It's my belief that they're totally aware of their own brand's consumer base. They know how many are loyal, they know how many are locked into contracts, and they know how many programs are blue team dependent. And that's a true story. There are many programs that will favor Intel architecture over AMD architecture, 
Well, if you test CPUs for a living or at any point during your life, I'm sure you'll realize that to some extent. So maybe they play on these cues and push prices to heights AMD could only dream of in its current state. And that's the problem I have with this. You see, I don't necessarily blame the consumers for such a high 9900K price, despite their inelastic demand tendencies. I can't really blame Intel either because they're doing what they want them to do. And, and honestly, if they could push more CPUs to the market, I think that they could. Um, I, think, I think they would, I should say. And that, that's because, again, if you sell more, you control more of the market. That's been their goal all along. And if Intel doesn't meet uh, contracts at certain dates, then it loses those contracts to AMD. AMD gains more market share, especially in the server space, which is where Intel's desperately trying to keep its ground. And that's a big problem for the blue team, but it ultimately is good for the consumer because it means that we have a more even distribution of market share, which means that prices should ultimately be more competitive. That's just, again, a theory on paper, and we'll have to see how that plays out in 2019 and 2020. So when I said on Twitter that Intel should lower its prices in order to properly compete, we of course know that's not going to happen. I just wish in a perfect society that was where the prices were because I feel like that is ultimately where they should be, but they're not because of a variety of circumstances, including the uh, dual 14 nanometer node production, also the fact that Intel is Intel, and they can pretty much charge whatever they want for something, and people will still buy it because they're Intel loyal, and they know that Intel CPUs ultimately get the job done the way they want them to. And regardless of whether or not Intel artificially shorts supply, which I think they would if they could, but can't in their current state, the fact of the matter is they can charge whatever they feel like charging, again within reason, in order to position themselves financially above the red team. Remember, the, the, the goal at the end of the day for companies of this size is to benefit the shareholders, and if you maximize margins, you're going to benefit the shareholders in the long run. For that matter, I don't even blame blame AMD for this. I mean, sure, we went through an extended hiatus after Piledriver and the FX lineup, but we've had two solid years for the market to saturate. Anyone who's wanted to convert to AMD or upgrade at this point probably already has or they will when the next gen stuff rolls out, which is what we always hear. But I think ultimately that whatever we have next time around is going to be uh, justified enough by people who are on old hardware that they'll want to upgrade if they can. So the point I'm trying to make here is this. AMD could have chosen to release Ryzen chips at or slightly below comparable Intel MSRPs, but instead they chose to undercut them completely, introducing an entirely new fan base centered around the word value. You can buy 8-core Ryzen CPUs for as low as 180 bucks during solid online sales. That in my opinion destroys even Intel's i5 offerings. The traditional response would be for Intel to lower its prices too, but they haven't. Instead they've actually gone up. But why? Because too many systems are Intel dependent, maybe. Too many programs favor Intel architecture and Intel chipsets. Too many servers use Intel CPUs. Intel owns too much of the market share. Is that Intel's fault? No, not at all. You can't blame Intel for dominating the market. It's a free market for the most part, especially in the US. And if Intel does better, they deserve to get ahead in a society like this. So who am I really trying to blame here? Well, it's really no one's fault. I mean, the free market allowed things to get where they are today, and I tend to lean on the side of the invisible hand, again with some restrictions. However, what Intel's done here is give the middle finger to those who insist on purchasing with a value-minded conscience. That word value is almost always attributed at this point with AMD, and there's a good reason why. So, you want to buy our Core i9-9900K. It's the best gaming CPU on the planet. Maybe not by as large a margin as our pricing structure suggests, but if you want it, you gotta pay a premium. I'll close with an opinion. Intel is becoming the Apple of CPUs, and I fear it'll only get worse from here unless AMD does some serious recon and grabs additional market share. Though the free market economist in me is begging for more entrance. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just choose between say like 10 different CPU brands, desktop CPU brands, each with its own unique feature set, like choosing a car. Sadly, we don't live in that world, but you gotta admit that would be pretty dope. If you guys like this video, let me know by giving someone a thumbs up. If you disagree with me or if you agree with me, I don't care if you're indifferent about this whole thing, just leave a comment down below. Let me know where you stand on this issue. If you have any uh, additional information to add to this discussion, that would also be appreciated. If you want to subscribe, I would appreciate it. That's that red button down below. You can become a member if you want to get fancy with it, and we'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.